Breaking tonight, Republican presidential candidate Marco Rubio has changed his campaign schedule and will no longer be coming to Lexington this week. A lot has changed since a tornado devastated West Liberty four years ago. We have hope. Tonight, the community celebrated recovery. Days after a man was badly injured in a hit and run crash, Lexington police are asking for help finding the person responsible. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening to you tonight. We have learned that Republican presidential candidate Marco Rubio has canceled his scheduled event in Lexington later this week. The Florida Center had been scheduled to attend a campaign event at the Lexington Center Friday morning. But that event disappeared from the list of scheduled events on Rubio's website tonight. And the Event Bright website, which was handling reservations for the event, posted a message that it has been canceled. He's also canceled another Friday campaign event in Louisiana. We did reach out to the Rubio campaign for an explanation of why the Lexington event was canceled. So far, we have not received a response from them. Rubio won the Republican caucus in Minnesota, but that was his only win during yesterday's Super Tuesday contest. Kentucky's Republican caucus is this Saturday. After a stretch of mild weather earlier in the week, it feels more like winter out there tonight. It does, and some light snow could be returning tomorrow. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey and your no wait weather forecast. Chris? Hi, guys. A lot of folks out there saying winter, please just go ahead, give up, and let spring move in. Storm system that is out across the plains has another idea. It's going to bring a little more in the way of some wintertime weather to the region tomorrow. Notice how most of the moisture is on the northern side of that. That's where some cold air is currently in place across the Ohio Valley, including here in Kentucky. So you get some of that moisture tomorrow. It's going to have to fight some dry air initially, but that cold, dry air will eventually mean a little mix of some rain and snow tomorrow. Nothing on your Defender Radar Network for now. Upper 20s to around 30 degrees into many areas. Wind chills down into the low and the mid-20s. So as we go through the day tomorrow, we will get a period of some light snow breaking out into the early morning hours. Then it's mainly some rain around the middle of the day. That'll switch over to some rain and some snow. What'll happen, temperatures spike a little bit and then drop as precipitation begins to move in. A slushy accumulation possible for some areas. We'll talk about that and we'll, uh, we will be on the lookout for spring at 11-12 with a full forecast. That's coming up in a little bit. And again, springtime weather coming next week. Short term, it's all about the snow chances, guys. Chris, thank you. It was one of the worst tornado outbreaks in the state's history. Four years ago today, tornadoes killed two dozen people and devastated parts of eastern and southern Kentucky. In Morgan County, much of that downtown West Liberty was destroyed. But the city has come a long way since 2012. Tonight, the community gathered to honor the recovery. Monique Blair has our top story at 11. Four years after much of West Liberty was destroyed, in some places it looks as if time has stood still. We just see the devastation. It's really heartbreaking. But the city is making a comeback. You can see the bank is rebuilding and the courthouse has recovered. But the emotions from that day are still palpable. I was just. Frozen. She was only five years old at the time, but Carolina Johnson remembers the first time she saw her church, the West Liberty Methodist Church, in Crumbles. And she stood in complete silence and looked back at me and she said, Mommy, when is that tornado going to learn its lesson? The Methodist Church once again stands tall after years of rebuilding. The Christian church was also wiped out that day, but this past January, the congregation was finally able to come back. Two churches, two different denominations, just one block from one another, both looked at as pillars in this community, decided to spend this four year anniversary by celebrating their new beginning. We have hope. Hope because after four years of picking up the pieces and putting their town back together, the people in West Liberty are ready to look ahead and not look back. And I think today, I think the tornado has finally learned its lesson that we are survivors and we are moving on. In West Liberty, Monique Blair, WKYT. Some great spirit and determination there. West Liberty's mayor says that two new tornado sirens will be installed in the city within the next few months. New tonight, a man was rushed to the hospital after Lexington firefighters say he was badly burned at an intersection. 
It happened tonight at the intersection of Richmond Road and Fontaine Road. Investigators say Lexington Fire Major Joe Madden was waiting at the traffic light when he saw the man on fire. Firefighters say Madden and others nearby rushed to the man's aid and put out the fire. The man was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Firefighters say Madden suffered burns to his hand and face. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, police say the man set himself on fire during an argument. Tonight, Lexington police need your help finding the person who hit a man with a car but didn't stop, leaving the victim badly injured. The crash happened early Sunday morning on LaFlame Alley, which runs parallel to Winchester Road. Garrett Weimer has the update on the investigation. It's a story new at 11 tonight. LaFlame Alley runs between several businesses and a row of homes. That alley is really just a few yards away from Winchester Road, but police say they're still trying to find anyone who might have witnessed what they believe was a hit and run. It all started shortly after 2.30 Sunday morning. Police say someone passing by found a man lying in the street. When investigators got to the alley, which runs between Hillcrest Avenue and East 7th Street, they say they found the man lying on the ground, badly hurt. Investigators say they think the man was hit by a car and the driver kept going. They're still trying to find the driver who nearly killed him, but we don't know much more. Police have not released any sort of description as far as what kind of car the person believed to have hit the victim might have been driving. Police say the man had life-threatening injuries, including injuries to his head, when they found him lying in the alley. We do not know his condition now. Police say they're asking folks to come forward if you saw it, if you heard it, if you know anything about it. Needing more information to put the pieces together of what happened to that man early Sunday morning. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. On Sunday, police said they were working to figure out what kind of car the person was driving based on tire tracks at the scene. Lexington police say you can give tips anonymously. New tonight, state police say they found a fugitive who caused a Laurel County school to go on lockdown today. Police say the 27-year-old Andrew Reeves of Nicholasville was driving a stolen SUV when they pulled him over on the Howe Rogers Parkway this morning. But he ran off into a wooded area as a precaution nearby Bush Elementary went on lockdown during the search. Late this afternoon, police say they found Reeves hiding inside an abandoned home on Lick Fork Road. He was wanted for parole violations. But police say he's now facing many other charges, including wanton endangerment and fleeing and evading. Garrett County leaders say they are concerned about a growing number of drug overdose deaths there. Police in Lancaster say they had three suspected drug overdose calls on Monday. Two of the people died. And the Garrett County coroner says so far this year there have been four suspected heroin deaths in the county, compared to none of all of last year. Trish Cottle says her 22 year old daughter Jenna died Monday from a suspected overdose. She says the family tried to get Jenna help for drug abuse, but nothing worked. We tried. We sent her to Best Blessings Rehab. Her sister here, she done everything possible trying to help her. And it's, it's not the rich, it's not the poor. The Garrett County Coroner says the state medical examiner's office receives about six or seven overdose cases a week. New tonight, police have arrested a woman they say was passed out in a car with a one year old child in the back seat. The Knox County Sheriff's Office charged 37 year old Tina Brown with DUI, wanton endangerment, and a drug offense. Deputies say they found Brown behind the steering wheel of a car parked outside a Dollar General store. They say social services took custody of the child. The Republican presidential candidates are preparing for another debate and Saturday's contest. But some party leaders could be trying to derail Donald Trump's campaign. The latest on that in nine minutes. And then for the first time in months, crews were working at the Center Point site today. What the developer now says about the project. Super Tuesday is over. Now it's Kentucky's turn with Saturday's Republican caucus. Who can vote and where? And what's the difference between a caucus and a primary? Understanding the Caucus, Thursday at 6 on WKYT. Kentucky mornings start here. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. Clients come into the office. The government has said, no, I don't believe you. You're not disabled. The major problem with Social Security Disability is that most people who sign up are denied at the initial level. If your claim's denied, don't give up. Call us immediately. We'll appeal your case. 
we can do an effective job of representing you that will get you the benefits that you deserve. Call Morgan, Collins, and Yeast. 1-800-55-WILDCAT. Life gets better the older you get, and time becomes more valuable. Time to spend with family, time to try new things, time to have fun. At Kroger, you can have your prescriptions filled while you shop. So it's easy to save money and time with your Kroger Pharmacy. And you can get back to the things you love. It's easy to manage all of your family's prescriptions all online. Order refills, view prescription history, and more. Visit Kroger.com slash MyPrescriptions today. Back by Super Packs in Washington, Philip Pratt is waging a toxic Washington-style campaign of distortion and lies. The truth? Chuck Tackett is no rubber stamp. Farmer, Frankfurt outsider, and servant leader, Chuck Tackett will stand up to the career politicians, take on establishment insiders, and fight for us. On Tuesday, reject Philip Pratt and his Washington Super PAC's toxic campaign. Vote Chuck Tackett. Farmer, Frankfurt outsider. I'm WKYT's Miranda Combs, and I stand for Kentucky. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, we had a very nice start to the week. It went downhill quickly, though, didn't it? With showers, thunderstorms, big drop in temperatures yesterday and today, feeling more like January instead of early March. And we've got one more little winter weather maker for some to go through tomorrow. Late evening thermometers into the upper 20s to around 30. 30 degrees popular. We've been holding at 30 into most areas for the past couple of hours. And notice the wind directions now. Those streamlines are coming from the southeast to the northwest. They're being pulled that way by an area of low pressure that is developing just to the west of the Kansas City area. Look at that temperature spike across parts of the Plain States. Numbers into western Kentucky beginning to increase a little bit. And late tonight, tomorrow morning, your back porch thermometer may come up ahead of another messy system that is rolling into town for the day tomorrow. Some rain, some snow, a little bit of both trying to battle it out into the heart of your Thursday afternoon. Signs of spring, though, showing up into the extended portion of that seven-day forecast. Nothing spring-like in this forecast. 32 degrees tomorrow morning. We go into the afternoon. We're going to spike it to 40 at some point on one of these off hours. And then as precipitation moves in, in the form of rain and some snow, that number will come down a little bit, and that will carry us into tomorrow evening with temperatures that will continue to drop. That's our storm system that we're going to continue to watch coming at us from west to east, and that's a system that will throw some moisture across the region. This isn't a big storm. It does have a decent amount of moisture with it, though, as we go through the heart of tomorrow. Hour by hour forecast. I want to show you how 7 in the morning, not a whole lot out there. Then all of a sudden, we get into the latter part of the morning and early afternoon. Notice the pink, the white. That's where the model is saying, you know, I could see some rain. I could see a little snow falling from the skies. And look at the temperatures. Upper 30s to low 40s. Watch that timeline. That's 1 o'clock tomorrow. Now look what happens as we go through a few hours later at 4 o'clock. Notice how all the numbers drop. So we've got some dry air in place. You get that precipitation in there, and it will eventually knock the numbers down a few degrees. If it can get them cold enough, it would make for a little swath of some light snow across parts of central and eastern Kentucky. We go through tomorrow evening, still a little wraparound snowflake or two that would carry us into Friday morning. Friday's clouds are going to be stubborn. Hopefully, fingers crossed by 4 or 5 o'clock into the afternoon on Friday, we'll see a little bit of clearing taking place. But even through the evening hours, we've got a fair amount of clouds. Saturday's forecast looking just a little better than what I was thinking earlier today because that next cold front is slowing down a little bit. It may not arrive until Saturday night. If that's the case, we bump it up into the 50s for Saturday afternoon. What about tomorrow? Chances for a little slushy light snow, especially afternoon and evening, for areas I've painted in blue across central and eastern Kentucky. Does that mean you're going to have snow on the ground? No, it means that you're going to have the best chance of picking up on some uh, snows falling. A lot of melting will take place, but I could see a couple of areas picking up on a whitened ground for a time. Ground is still warm. It would melt fairly quickly after that. We go through Friday with that chance for some flurries in the morning. Upper 50s, upper 40s to low 50s on Saturday, mid 50s Sunday. Hello, spring. As we go into next week with temperatures 70 degrees or better. Just a few bumps to get to those 70s. A couple little speed bumps in yeah, there. Because thank you. An Eastern Kentucky mayor says someone stole a gun from him, but he later got it back in an unusual way. The story in seven minutes.
Are you tired of juggling your finances and can't afford those remodeling projects? Surplus Sales has hardwood flooring starting at only $1.99 per square foot. Come on down to Surplus Sales for some great deals. This new DQ chicken bruschetta is a high-end Italian sports car. No, actually, it's oven-hot focaccia bread, a balsamic glaze. It's a high-end Italian romance. No, it, it's chopped tomatoes and herbs. It's a high-end Italian fashion. It's a high-end Italian sandwich. I like sandwich. The new DQ Bakes Chicken Bruschetta, a premium Italian sandwich at a not-so-premium price. Hot out of the oven, only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. Fast, quality, affordable. When it comes to kitchen cabinets, most showrooms offer only two of these options. But at Lexington Express Cabinets, you'll get fast delivery, quality selection, and affordable warehouse prices. Call or click today to see why Lexington Express does cabinets for less. Standing for Kentucky means being proud of where you come from and being proud of where we're headed. Kentucky's history, present, and future have a common theme, hard work. It took hard work to get here, and we Kentuckians know it will take hard work to get us through tomorrow. At WKYT, we're proud to tell the stories of everyday Kentuckians who aren't afraid to get their hands a little dirty to make this a better place to live. WKYT stands for Kentucky. Every morning is an eye-opening morning on CBS This Morning. Start with responsible, intelligent information and conversation. Take me back to that moment that we just saw in this confrontation. Searchers race to save people trapped for days in Colorado. In an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning. Start with world-class original reporting. Start thinking. CBS This Morning. This is Captain Eve Baxter of the timeship Acheron requesting critical rescue. How do we know it's not a trap? I'm in. I got a bad feeling about this. Makes him a dark place. He's not coming back. You and I were a team. Time to choose a side. Only one of us is walking out of here alive. DC's Legends of Tomorrow. New hit series this Thursday at 8, 7 central on The CW. A day after Super Tuesday, the Republican presidential candidates are focused on tomorrow night's debate and Saturday's contest, which includes, of course, the Kentucky GOP caucus. But the field is getting smaller, and frontrunner Donald Trump is fending off an attack from within his own party. Greg Boswell has the latest from the campaigns. Donald Trump goes into Thursday's debate in Detroit, propelled by Super Tuesday momentum. He now has more than one quarter of the delegates needed to win the Republican nomination. I'm a unifier. I don't but there's talk among party leaders to organize an effort to derail Trump's campaign before the July convention. There is definitely motivation. I asked someone involved with the anti-Trump effort to rank the Republican panic on a scale of 1 to 10, and he said 11. On Wednesday, Trump tweeted, why can't the Republican Party see that I am bringing in new voters and creating a larger party? Two-time Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney is expected to be highly critical of Trump during a speech Thursday, and Trump's rivals are attacking him on the trail. I believe if we stand together, Donald Trump will not be the nominee. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is campaigning in Michigan. And if we choose Donald Trump as our nominee, he will have carried out the most elaborate con job in the history of American politics. Ohio Governor John Kasich says he's staying positive. Attacking Donald Trump or insulting him is not going to peel any voters away from him. One time presidential frontrunner Ben Carson had proposed a meeting with all GOP candidates to discuss the increasingly nasty tone of the race, but he's since dropped out of Thursday's debate and says he doesn't see a path forward for his campaign. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. As we mentioned earlier, Marco Rubio has canceled a campaign stop in Lexington that had been scheduled for Friday, and he also canceled another event in Louisiana for the same day. Tonight, the owner and developer of the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington claims work has resumed there. When we got to the site this afternoon with our camera, an excavator was digging rock out of a hole. In a statement, developer Dudley Webb says his company is moving ahead with the project and is working toward completing the underground parking garage. He also claims that Lexington city leaders did not support the project like they said they would. A spokeswoman for Mayor Jim Gray said, quote, if real progress is occurring, then it would represent a major turn of events. 
Hopefully, this is not more of the same that we have experienced for eight years. End of quote. City leaders had previously said they intended to fill the hole up if work did not resume by March 30th. We have some new information tonight about the case against a man accused of killing someone at an Allen County nursing home. Scottsville police charged a man who legally changed his name to the Reverend with murder last week. Police say he killed a 71-year-old man at the nursing home where they both live. Today, a judge ordered the subject to undergo a mental evaluation before his case can proceed. Police say the suspect stabbed the victim with an ink pen, then choked him to death with a lamp cord during an argument. New tonight, an unusual theft case in Harlan County. The mayor says he ended up buying his gun back after it was stolen. Everett's mayor, Eddie Manning, says his pistol was stolen from a truck earlier this week, but investigators later found it. Some people were trying to sell the gun, so Manning says he set up a meeting with them while police waited nearby. And he says he bought the gun back. Manning says the pistol means a lot to him. That weapon I purchased when I was about 19 years old, it was my first weapon I'd ever purchased. And you know, when for me, that was the weapons that I was going to, one of the weapons that I was going to leave to my children. Moments after the sale, police arrested the four people who had the stolen gun. They're charged with receiving stolen property. The UK women's team begins the postseason tomorrow, Rob. Well, the cats have been winning for Matthew Mitchell. It is important now to keep winning. And in boys' region action tonight, a buzzer beater. We'll have all the highlights when we come right back with sports. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Wild 1039. Everyone has their own tastes, and Kroger has something for the one who likes eating healthy, the one who loves to eat, and the one just learning to eat. From cleaning the plate to cleaning the house, you'll find a brand for everyone in your family. And because everyone loves to save money, our exclusive brands are affordable too. Delicious, delightful, and made just for you. Everything to make your everyday special with our family of brands at Kroger. This is Brett Melrose. Winter's here and the experienced team at Fayette Heating and Air stands ready to serve you. Dedicated to keeping you and your family comfortable around the clock. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, with no additional overtime fees ever. Fayette Heating and Air, we're the biggest because we're the best, and we're here for you anytime, day or night. Call 233-0424. Fayette Heating and Air, complete home solutions. Friday's Mega Million jackpot is $144 million. Right now at Papa John's, get one of our best deals ever. For just $9.99, you can get any large pizza with up to five toppings. Pile on your favorites with up to five toppings for just $9.99. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Philip Pratt, a proud grandfather, a loving and caring family man, a hardworking small business owner, someone who knows how to grow jobs and change the landscape in Frankfurt. Philip Pratt will hold government accountable responsibly, fight Obama's crippling government overreach on our agriculture economy, and preserve our Kentucky heritage in Owen and Scott County. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Philip Pratt for state representative. Make time this spring to escape to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the only thing you'll want to do is have fun in the sun. Let the sound of the ocean's tide take all your cares away and leave you refreshed to experience something new. It's your moment to let go and unwind on Myrtle Beach time. Let go and unwind on Myrtle Beach time. It's time to wake up. You've got things to do. Mouths to feed, work to get done. It's another Kentucky morning, and Kentucky mornings start here. Good morning, I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. You don't have time to waste, so we don't waste your time. Simple as that. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. 
Right now at Papa John's, get one of our best deals ever. For just $9.99, you can get any large pizza with up to five toppings. Pile on your favorites with up to five toppings for just $9.99. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Kentucky bouncing back with a good victory over Florida last night. The Cats' big men played well, but John Calipari was not happy with the interior defense on the Gators' John Igbunu. He went wild, scoring 27 points. My teams at this time of the year, they, it's all up a notch. It's, there's laser. Well, this team's not there yet. So a guy goes in and leaves the big kid. And they just throw bounce passes to him. It wasn't like it was post ups, it was bounce passes and lobs. What do, and it's, we were, our whole thing was we're backing up and make those guards beat us shooting balls. We're not giving him bounce passes. He's got three. I went crazy. Like, what were you watching? Why would you do that? And it was like, mm, I don't know. All right, senior day is next, and you will see it right here Kentucky and LSU Saturday at 2 on WDKYT. The UK women's team will open the SEC tournament tomorrow afternoon against LSU. As Christy Thomas tells us, the Cats are looking to extend a winning streak. In the midst of the six game winning streak, Kentucky's playing well in all facets of the game, but their post play seems to have gone to the next level. With Evelyn Akator and Alexis Jennings turning in a dominating performance in their season finale against Texas AM, these two posted a double double and combined for 34 of UK's 57 rebounds. I think the biggest change is they're not traveling and turning the ball over. They've got a better feel for what they're doing. They have more poise and more patience. And people are running a lot of stuff at them. You know, three or four weeks ago, we were just, we just didn't have a lot of confidence, a lot of poise. And then our players have a strong desire to get better. And so I think that good instruction, hard work ethic, good attitude, uh, rep after rep after rep has finally made a difference for them, and they're playing at a high level right now. It's our time, you know. That's been our motto from the summer. So I just feel like, you know, it's our time to just prove to people who maybe have doubted us, you know, that like, we like we've arrived basically, you know, like we're on our way to, you know, do bigger and better things if we keep up the pace that we're on. And the post players will have the opportunity to show everyone that tournament time is their time as they open up against an LSU team that they've already beaten once this year. In Jacksonville, Christy Thomas, WKYT. Thank you, Christy. Marquee matchup to open up the boys' 11th region tournament, Scott County against Madison Central. These two have not met in almost two years. Scott County out of the quick lead. And in Central's Dakota Begley pops a three. The cards, Bryce Long, showing off the shooter's touch. He had 13 tonight. Scott County would grow the lead to 15. Clem Dameron with 18 points. He's fouled. Central makes a run. John Williams, the drive, and he rolls it in. 21 for Williams, but the cards would hold on. Michael Marino had a double double. He lays it in. Scott County survives by four, 71 67. 43rd District runner up Lafayette meeting 41st District champion Franklin County. It was all generals. Chris Wharton with a layup. Harrison Lane hits a three. Lafayette with 10 of them in the first half. Then, right before the buzzer, Evan Drew with a basket, and then Lane steals the inbounds pass and lays it in. Generals move on 76 to 42. Now to the 10th region, Paris and Harrison County. The Hounds, Marcus Ashford, jump stop and scores in the lane. Final seconds of the first quarter. Zach Pulliam beats the clock with a long three. Harrison County leading, but Harris would come back. Cajun Cunningham with the three-pointer here. And the Greyhounds advance by 15, 75, 60. Mason County and Campbell County also in the opening round and a thriller here. Final 30 seconds. Mason County down two. Darren Williams, the three-pointer. The Royals go up one, 69, 68. Long way to go, though. 15 seconds for Campbell County. Joel Day keeps his dribble alive, gets it to Trent McGovney, who hits the 15-footer. Campbell County takes the lead back. Mason County, 6.7 seconds. Length of the court. Levi Dunaway to Pig Williams. And Williams from 26 feet. The deep three to win it at the buzzer.
Mason County advances 72-70. Boys 12th Region, Mercer County improves to 31-1, 61-49 over Rockcastle County tonight. And the Titans will get the Southwestern Warriors. They defeated Lincoln County 64-42. Home opener for UK baseball, Kentucky and Austin P in the fourth. Gunner McNeil with a drive to left, and the win takes it out. One to nothing, Cats. Now game tied 2-2, eighth inning. Luke Becker with the pinch hit single. Tristan Pompey comes in to score, and Kentucky rallies to win it 3-2. Stay with us. Matt Jones is up next. There were days last month we couldn't even open the doors. Now it's time to catch up with up to half off in three years, zero interest with no money down. Instant rebates up to $1,500. The snow emergency sale through Tuesday. Nobody beats PDRATS. The hottest name in late night is talking to the biggest names in politics. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Who's paying for the candy? I <laughs> The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. This is the first interview that we've had. That's true. Yeah, I was yeah, playing a character true. who did not care for you. I can say it now. It was mutual. <laughs> Where newsmakers make news. I've said a few things about you over the years. Some nice things. Uh, some nice things. No. Not too much. <laughs> Weeknights, only CBS. You think you've got a good answer? Bling bling. Botox. Dead body in a wheelbarrow. I'm so confused right now. Would you say it in front of your family? Name something in a bedroom you hope doesn't get broken while making whoopee. No, y'all won't knock over that lamp. <laughs> no, y'all won't knock over that lamp. <laughs> I be busy. Sometimes my foot just, I just knock it. I knock that lamp over. I thought a fire up in here. Family Feud. One full hour starting at 7 on the CW Lexington. At WKYT, we stand for Kentucky. We stand for the people of this great commonwealth. We stand for hard work and for those who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. We stand for the little guy and we root for the underdog if we ever had to. We stand with Kentucky through hardships and through triumphs, through uncertainty and through tragedy. We stand for the big city and the rolling hills alike. And we stand for the one unifying factor that brings us all together, pride. Pride in our home state, in where we've been, and in where we're going. At WKYT, we always have been, and we always will be, standing right here with you. WKYT stands for Kentucky. At the end of the broadcast, I'm most proud of what we have done as a team. This is the ultimate team sport, television news. And all of the people that have contributed to that night's broadcast, people who have risked their lives to tell the news and to deliver to the American people the highest quality news broadcast in the world today, that is a very satisfying feeling. When big news breaks, be the first to know. Download the WKYT News app and turn on push alerts. Breaking news at your fingertips when you need to know what's going on. Want to make great meals easy? Then you'll want to come to our Kitchen Makeover event. Look at all you get in this Amana Stainless Steel Package, now $17.99. Plus up to three years zero interest and with select packages of free 50-inch TV. Nobody beats P-Rats. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Mix 94.5. Very encouraging game last night from Kentucky down in Gainesville as the Cats took care of the Gators and played one of their better games of the last few weeks. It was great to see all five starters actually score in double figures. I'm not sure if that's happened all season since the non-conference, and they did it because guys came to play. Alex Poitras scored at the very beginning of the game. Over the last few games, if he scores in the first four minutes, he averages 14 points. If he doesn't, he averages five, and he came out hot. But most importantly, we got something from Scal. Scal nearly had a double-double. He rebounded and he made shots. That's the kind of thing that can make a huge difference for Kentucky in their run to March. Now, starting Saturday, Derek Willis will be back, so they can do a lot of different things with the lineup. But most importantly, every guy has to play every night. There are going to be nights like last time, when Jamal Murray didn't shoot the ball very well in the first half, but Kentucky still led because the other guys brought their game. 
I'm very excited about this team going into March. I think they can beat anybody, but they also can lose to anybody. And the way to keep that from happening is to have Alex, Scal, Briscoe, etc. help Murray and Euless and get them to where they need to be, which is a Final Four contender. I'm Matt Jones, and this has been Overtime. All right, EmojiCast, as we work our way into Thursday, you're going to be a little angry in the morning because you know what's coming throughout the day. Some rain and some snow with temperatures in the 30s. I'm glad we don't have to simulate those emoji faces, uh, yeah. those in particular. Absolutely. We'll see you tomorrow.